Hey everyone, this is, uh, you know who I am, and uh, right now I'm about to do a gear upgrade to one of these Northwestern short lines. This is my, uh, well, <laughs> this is not really my engine, but hey, yeah, yeah, the, um, this is an FN3 gear for a 440 or 260 axle. I'm doing it on my girlfriend's engine because, uh, even though the gear's in pretty good shape, the original OEM gears are not the best. The reason is, the uh, you see the middle hole right here? Um, this one you sort of have to cut open, which adds friction and makes it really hold very well onto the splines. Whereas the new, the older ones that they come with, they're too smooth, the gears are too thin, and they uh, come spinning right off especially in extreme heat and temperature. After a certain amount of running time, they spin right off, or especially in extreme temperature with the uh, constant expansion and contraction of the metal. And so, uh, so this, uh, my girlfriend's engine can last a long time since her brothers are really going to enjoy playing with this. <sighs> and uh, also since her dad is going to be taken care of care of it, he wouldn't really know what to do in case anything uh, happened to this locomotive. So I'm uh, doing the necessary upgrades right now, so the uh, engine is pretty much good to go and will last a long time. I'm doing this gear upgrade on uh, as many of my engines as possible so they can last a long time, because the original OEM grades, it's not a matter of if those gears strip, it's a matter of when they strip. So it's best to pretty much get these gear swaps out the way as soon as you can. And uh, that is one thing you to keep in mind when you buy a 260 or 440 is be sure you get these gears from Northwestern Shortline. They're about $10 a piece, which is not too bad, and it's really easy to do. And so to begin, you'll just need um, a pair of scissors, which you can just slide the gear on to uh, and spin so uh, some of the plastic comes off. You'll need um, a basic small uh, Phillips screwdriver and a crescent wrench. So what you do is you turn the locomotive gently on its side and the tender. And then you gently uh, Use your crescent wrench to uh, break the uh, crank pins loose, and that should pretty much do. Then you can pretty much uh, remove the crank pins by hand, yeah, and gently pull the main drive rod away from the uh, away from the locomotive's crank pin and do the same thing on the one with the on the rear yeah make sure you keep the lug nuts in a close position no because i know where each part goes um, I can pretty much remember, but I recommend that you place everything in a cup or a small container to prevent all, prevent all the uh, little screws and everything from rolling away. And now that I'm uh, getting done with this over here, yeah, this is a little hard to reach because it's right by the crosshead. And there we go. All three lug nuts are off, and so is our main side rod. Now, it's time to do the other side, so what we do is we gently pick up our locomotive and turn her to the other side, and we grab our crescent wrench again. Yeah. 
we broke it loose. Then we can pretty much just unscrew the lug nut by hand. It doesn't matter uh, which lug nut goes where because they're all interchangeable. Yeah, and then remember, gently pull up on the uh, main drive rod and move it away from the crank pin. Then we go to the rear. And we gently break the rear lug nut loose. Then we finish untightening it by hand. Okay, then we need to gently remove the main side rod off. Don't force it. You don't want to be too forcey. But be very gentle, and it should coax right off. And right now we've got the uh, yeah bearing cup sort of blocking the way. And now we can sort of rotate the front driver because it's moving on its own and it's free of gears. And what we do is, well... What we do is, I need best to use two hands with this, but you pretty much, well, the best thing to do is try to break this free, the lug nut in the front that is, yeah, we, we pretty much got that, it needs a little bit more untightening. Yeah. Uh. Yep. And now, since we've untight. We managed to break it loose. We can just spin it spin it off by hand. And there. Oh. Yep, here's here's the lug nut, and here's the other side rod. And I found the other lug nut. And there we go. Now, to get the wheels off, the only wheels we need to remove will be the center ones. So, with your thumb and forefinger, or gently as a flathead screwdriver, but I have pretty thick and long nails, so just gently pry up on the hubcap, and it should peek, come right off. Then, get your basic screwdriver, and it should quickly screw right off, turn it counterclockwise to loosen. Then this will slowly come right off. Then we turn it on its other side, and we do the same thing. Watch me closely. Yeah, see? Yep, I used my thumb and forefinger, and the hubcap is, the hubcap is now off. And so is the other driver. Yeah. And those are the only two wheels you have to take off. Then, what you need to do next is gently take these uh, guide pins out. There are two sets of Phillips screws right there. And you...
This way you can get better access to the motor. Also, this will allow your engine to go around sharper, sharper radius curves. But mostly it keeps your center wheels pretty much well guided and prevents them from uh, loosening up. Okay, now that that's off, we can take off the cover plate. Be very, very careful because these, these ends right here on the cover plate, they're very, very fragile, so you want to be very gentle with them. You gently start unscrewing all eight bolts. There are four bolts in the, the front with rig, small Phillips screws and four in the rear. Yeah, I have a paper towel here because I rent and I don't want any oil or grease to get on the uh, floor, but because this engine hasn't really been lubed and hasn't turned a wheel, this won't really be a problem. And because the engine is pretty much new, she's pretty clean. Okay, and that's the front. Now for the rear, we pretty much do the same thing. There are four screws in the rear and the rear And you can vaguely see the screwdriver right behind the driving wheel. And once pretty much all four screws are out, gently pull off the cover plate. There are two wires back here for the chuff sensor, so you want to be very, very careful with that. But because I plan to put the chuff, the chuff sensor on the uh, far rear, that's not really going to be an issue. Now, to get this part out, the motor block, you want to gently slide off these bearings on both sides yeah and there's a large washer these washers act like spacers so it's very important that you hang on to them there's one on each side in front of each bearing then once you get both washers off on both sides it's time to slip off the eccentrics you pull one off and this is pretty much what keeps the eccentrics in line. Ugh. Yeah, because I need pretty much need two hands, it's a little tricky to do it with one hand, but there. Yep. Also, it doesn't really matter um, which eccentric part goes where because they're interchangeable. Now we pretty much have to do it on the other side. Yeah, that came right out. Okay, so now here are all the parts for the eccentrics. And now the engine block is out. And now that the motor block is out, we can get to work on upgrading the uh, gear on the main drive axle. You see, this is the axle where the uh, we want to get the gear out. Well, I'll show you what to do next on a next video segment.